is Muslim youth leaving Islam. 24% of Muslim youth are leaving Islam. Your child is about to become apostate. Your child is about to become apostate. In America, this is the last thing, 23% are becoming apostates of Muslims, American-born Muslims. Well, so one of the more shocking things that I have experienced over the course of those years is are the number of young boys and girls aged between 13 to 18 who have openly declared their apostasy to me. Do you know how many Muslims became atheists today? Polls conducted in the Muslim world reveal that up to 5% of Muslims in some of the most conservative Muslim countries in the world are closet atheists. Addressing their parents, their family, and telling them, I don't believe in Allah. I don't believe that Muhammad وسلم, was a messenger of Allah. Stop. Are you kidding me? They don't believe that Muhammad is a messenger of Allah? What a shame. Peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends. And if you don't have a friends who care, invite your four wives and 70 kids. And let us praise Allah and his shin. Uh, today, uh, as you see the title, you know, the most, who is the most annoying to me? And I saw some comment. Uh, people saying uh, Muhammadan. No, Muhammadan are the most cute person for me. Actually, they are my snack. You know, I, 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 they, they, they make my day, actually. But the one, the most annoying people to me is Christians. You know, from time to time, I receive email almost every few days. Every few days. CP. I really appreciate what you do. I'm not going to show you the emails. I really appreciate what you do, but I want to say something to you. Can you please stop using potato, stupid, or other words? And you know, I read those emails and I say, God, what I did, what I did exactly, why you are, why you are punishing me with those silly, self claim to be knowledgeable about Christianity. Look like Jesus is not the one who was speaking in the Bible. Like, you know, can we earn the Muslims with the love of Jesus? With what? With the love of Jesus? Hmm. Okay. I think I do not know the Bible yet. And you guys, you know it better than me. Obviously. Matthew 23 Then spake Jesus to the multitude, and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say, and do not. For they bind heavy burdens, and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries, and enlarge the borders of their garments, and love the uppermost rooms at feasts, and the chief seats in the synagogues, and greetings in the markets, and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But be not ye called Rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! 
For ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Woe unto you, ye blind guides, which say, Whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. Ye fools and blind, for whether is greater, the gold, or the temple that sanctifieth the gold? And whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing. But whosoever sweareth by the gift that is upon it, he is guilty. Ye fools and blind, for whether is greater, the gift, or the altar that sanctifieth the gift? Whoso therefore shall swear by the altar, sweareth by it, and by all things thereon. And whoso shall swear by the temple, sweareth by it, and by him that dwelleth therein. And he that shall swear by heaven, sweareth by the throne of God, and by him that sitteth thereon. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone, ye blind guides, which strain at a gnat, and swallow a camel. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones, and of all uncleanness. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets, and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous, and say, If we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves, that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barachias, who... Let me do that. You know, I wanted those Christians to remember that Jesus, he called people hypocrites. He called them fool. He called them stupid. He called them liars. He called them snakes. He called them sons of the devil. So when somebody come to me and says complain about saying potato, obviously you don't have one verse from the Bible in your head. You have a potato. When somebody come to me and he try to school me how to talk to Muslims, and they are the one who never spoke to one, and they never made one Muslim leave the garbage, the garbage of Muhammad. When you come here, our topic is not a pleasant topic. And here we talk about penis, vagina. I mean, you are coming to a place where we are talking about the teaching of the devil, and half of the time we are talking about endless vagina and endless penis fit for that. And you are complaining about the word idiot. I mean, who is the idiot here? Research show that. Who is the idiot here? It's like going inside, uh, uh, you know, uh, like you are a surgeon. 
You want to be a surgeon, and you want to do a surgery, but you don't want to see blood. Christians, do me a favor. Don't come here if you are from those people. So you sit here, and you are listening to a conversation asking the Muslim, why your God, he want to make your penis endless, and why you will have 70 years, or 70 years orgasm, and, in, and then you complain about the word potato? I mean, all this disgusting thing you are hearing, and this is the only one hurt your feeling. Yeah, because we need to love, to, you know, we love the Muslims, and we need to love them, and we win them by the love of Jesus. You abuse the word love. Love, it, it doesn't mean anything no more. Jesus is not what you are presenting to people. Jesus is the same person who will come in the judgment day. And he will send billions to hell. The love of Jesus is for those who deserve Jesus. Even Jesus said, don't throw your jewels under the feet of a swine. I don't call them swine. I call them potatoes. And then those dummies they keep coming to me, and don't take me wrong, CP. I really appreciate what you do. No, you don't. <clears throat> and you have no idea what you are saying. And don't come here. Another issue. You will see a comment saying, somebody saying, well, I don't like it when you say something about someone like example, David Wood, like you don't do good in debate. Why you don't like it? Why? Well, I'm saying the truth. Stop making silly Muslim famous. And if you don't like to hear it, don't come here. Muslims, they line up to debate somebody for a reason and they avoid somebody else for a reason. Then you need to ask yourself, what is the reason? Why the same ones they are lining up to debate him or her or whoever he is, they don't line up to debate me. So we as a Christians, we should correct the one who is not doing the right thing. You jump in the fight to bring victory. If you are not prepared for the fight, don't jump for it. Is that clear? Which Muhammadan he did call me ever once, and we did not make him a famous as a fool, not famous as a smart. We make him famous as a fool. This is why if they call once, they don't call again. Unless, unless they are trying to leave us now, maybe. Should a friend those hypocrite Christians? What do you mean should a friend them? Fried, ah, uh, fried, sorry. Anyway, they are not hypocrite, but they are ignorant. They do not know what we are dealing with, you know? They, those Christians, you know, they go to the church and, you know, we love everybody, wave your hand to Jesus, and this, they, they think this is, that's it. That will solve the problem. Like, you know, the guy, uh, this, uh, uh, the, the Christian pastor who went to Yasser Qadi, and he's, come on, guy, we guys, we have to get along. You are 1.8 and we are 2.8. Uh, you know, we have to get, what does that mean? So we have people who they have, they, they don't use their brain. They have a very limited knowledge in the topic we are dealing with. Uh, and, you know, they are wondering, you know, uh, why he is using such a topic, such a language. But don't you notice what the topic is? The topic is a guy saying to them, kill them, so you get, get a penis. A guy is saying to them, if you go to heaven, 
Each time you have intercourse, Allah will put his finger there and fix the vagina. So our topic is filthy, it is dirty, for Muhammad is filthy and dirty, and his religion is, is, a, is a scam, is satanic. And then you wonder, like, well, he, did, did he just call the guy potato? And those are the most annoying people to me. People who never made one person leave Islam. We made, I don't want to say thousands, if not ten, tens of thousands. Nobody can count how many, because we use the word potato with knowledge. We don't insult, we are not insulting. When you say to somebody you are stupid and he is a stupid, you are not insulting. It's an insult to say to the stupid, you are fine. Christians should people, if you are a Christian and you are teaching and you did not offend anyone, that's mean you said nothing, you taught nothing. Because you said what people accept. And what people accept in this world is not what God said. People who offend no one, they spoke to no one. And Jesus offended them all. He offended them every day. He called them hypocrites wherever he, wherever he go. Liars. You are the same as your father, the devil. Somebody saying, is it okay to be Islamophobe? This is another thing, you know, some people, they are really weird. Don't even know what Islamophobe mean. Do you know what phobe mean? Phobe is you afraid of something and it's not exist. Islamophobe. So if we, that's mean, if Islam is not a scary cult, violent and garbage religion, why we have security in the airport? Uh, because of the Islamophobe. No. Because the danger of Islam is real. When somebody tried to be smart, and he said to us, only 10% of Muslims believe in terrorism. If the Muslim, they claim that there are 1.8 billion, that, that, is, that means there's 180 million terrorists. Islamophobe, okay, the Islamophobe. So there is many stupid in the West, including Christians. They promote this idea that when we talk about Islam, we are Islamophobe. Islam is a good religion. And they are, they have a phobia. In fact, Islam is the religion of, of, of phobia. They have a phobia from pigs, they have phobia from music, they have phobia from the cross, they have phobia from the Jews, they have phobia from dogs. They have phobia, even lizard is their enemy. It is a religion of phobia. Every member of it is a phobia member. Have you ever heard of a religion? They make a fatwa against Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse. So those, you know, uh, you watch those TV station, politically correct. Everybody have a business with those Muslim businessmen like Facebook. Facebook, almost half of it is owned by Muslims. Sky News, all of it is owned by Muslims. Especially Sky News in Arabic. BBC. So you listen to those liars and you become an addicted to their lies. This is a very dangerous cult. Violence is their way. Mickey Mouse should be killed. Not only us, not only authors, not only writers, not only singers, Chess is haram.
Okay, what is halal? Go and if a girl, she is six years old. And then you will get somebody sending you an email, long email. Please don't uh, take it wrong, CP. I really, I appreciate what you do. So, you know, the next time, please do me a favor. Don't appreciate what I do and leave me alone. You make me sick. Those people literally make me sick. It doesn't bother me speaking to a stupid idiot who believe in his penis is going to be long. Because I know he's stupid. He's following a stupid prophet, so I'm not blaming him. Uh, I am a person who says things as it is. I don't decorate, I don't sugarcoat, and I don't care who like it and who don't. I am the last one who care really who like what I say and who don't like what I say. And I say to people in their face, not only in their back. When I say in their back, because they did not call me, well, if they call me, I will say to them in their face what they deserve to, to be said. And if you don't like the way I talk, don't come here. Didn't we have enough liar, li liars? The problem in this earth, the problem actually even our churches, you go to the church, the second you ask the priest to talk about Islam, and suddenly, okay, we know we, all of us, all of us, we are believing Abraham, okay, and we have one God, we disagree with them, uh, but you know, what, 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 what? The Muslims believe in the same God as we do? Is that what the Bible teaches you? Isn't it the Bible says, who is the Antichrist, is the one who denies Jesus Christ as a son? Our problem that we don't have a Christians who speak things as it is. We have a bunch of people doing business in their churches. Don't say anything or offend anyone, so you will be safe. As simple as that. Could be a Mohammedan acting like Christian. No, my friend, I know there's many Christians like that. Many, many, you know. You see, first time I started speaking about Islam, this is a long time ago, the Christians are the first one who oppose me. Not the Muslims. This is not how a Christian they talk. This is not what Jesus taught you. This is not what the Bible says. Obviously, they do not know who is Jesus, and they have no idea what is the Bible. But I don't blame them. This is what they learn from the church. Uh, if you're if you have somebody you care for and he is taking drugs what do you do you give him a hug if somebody uh, you know he uh, he faint uh, somebody he's drowning what do you do you try to explain to him what water is now or you grab him violently and you take him from the water In order to save somebody, in order to make somebody awake, you have to wake him up. And if you have a better language to wake up somebody, use it. I'm not telling you that, oh, this is my, the method only to use. Any, any method you can. Show me your success. But I'm proving my success and I do not need your advice. And maybe Jesus was not a good Christian then for you, because he has a lot of harsh language. Very harsh. Even he flipped tables. 
on those hypocrites who made the house of God a bazaar, a market. If you cannot do that yourself, well, obviously, you do not know anything about Christianity yet. You have a you have a different uh, version of Christianity. Mecca today is a bazaar. It's the biggest business to Saudi Arabia. A huge income they make from it. People they have to stay in hotels. People they have to pay for airline ticket. Mecca is Las Vegas. And the gambling is. Put your money here so Allah will reward you. It was a market in the time of Muhammad. It was a market before the time of Muhammad. And it's a market today and nothing changed. Anyway, I'm not going to keep you for long. But if there is any Muslim here would like to... If there is a shake, there isn't. Do we have any shake here? Would like to call me and have a conversation with me? Shake, I want a shake, you know. I'm grieving for a shake. Anyone? Do we have any Mohammedan shake, big shake with long beard? We cannot ask you if you are like those kids, Aridawa. Because those are kids, they don't know what they are talking about. In Islam, in Islam. No, not like this, hold on. But I don't listen to him. I listen to him a few times only. Last time when he was wearing this joke jacket of the, for the circus. We are watching you. And we are going to refute you. And we are going to answer you. Hey, my wife, give me some grape, give me some grape. <laughs> And the other guy, your son is going to be a potato. Your son is going to be a potato. Like, what the heck? What his son will be what? A potato. Those people they understand one language. You see, if you try to speak to Muslims, you will see how much they use mockery. Mockery, you know. When a Christian debate a Muslim. Right away, the Muslim, he tried to mock you. And because the Christians are not used to this, they would look like they don't know what to do with those people. They look like the Muslim is winning because they are using the mockery method. Your son, your child will become a state, okay? Child is about to become apostate. Your child is about to become apostate. In America, this is the last thing. Twenty-three percent are becoming apostates. So those people, you know, when you speak to them, they will not dare to speak to me. You know, I called this guy. You know what happened? The coward. He played for me a video. Did you say that? Hang up on him because they are very much intimidated. The guy. He claimed to be a Muslim. He never say inshallah. A Christian prince is a schooling a Muhammadan who claimed to be growing a beard. Who never say inshallah before he start his his anything he do. Those people they understand that you are when you are nice, that Allah He cursed you. And many of you do not know that. You see, when you are as a Christian, you are very nice when you speak to them. The Muslim they don't think, they don't take it as oh, because he's nice, because he's following Jesus. No. They are filthy Muhammad in chapter 3 as an example, verse 112. It says that Allah, he put shame, he bitched shame on you. Wherever you go. So when a, when, a, when a Christian, he is nice. And he is humble. Those Muhammadan, they think, well, you know what? The Quran says Allah will put shame on them and he will bitch shame over them. And they will, he will force them to be, uh, uh, you know, uh, down. When you are kind to them, they think this is a curse. 
When they speak to me, we prove to them that Allah is a liar. Here we shame you. We don't give you hugs. Here we shame you. You are following the most shameful, stupid God. And the funny is, the Quran is saying that we are shamed, and you know, we are weak wherever we go, but yet all the Muhammadan, they are, they are, they are praising Putin. And Kadarov is saying, uh, I, I will die for Putin. Your God is those leaders who they are supposed to Christian countries. So how Allah he shamed them? How Allah he made them weak? All the superpower countries, none of them is a Muslim. In the best scenario, you have oil and you cannot even make it water. Uh, Jesus said, love and pray for your enemy. Why you are humiliating Muhammad and Muslims? Well, Jesus said that the, those who follow Satan, they are satanic. And those who disobey God, they are snakes. And Muhammad is a snake. Jesus said, there's many false prophets will come after me. So your prophet is included. And it's not, it's not me who is humiliating you, it's you humiliating yourself. A person, he is an adult, mature, he believes it's okay to have sex with the children. Obviously, I have to call you a pervert, a pervert, sorry. You humiliated yourself, you are pervert, following a pervert prophet. A person, he believes in order to go to heaven, he have to kill some Christians, some Jews, some atheists, some whatever. You are a murderer, you humiliated yourself and murderer should go to jail, should not be free. When you believe that you can, it's okay to beat your wife, you humiliated yourself. For God, he created the women from the man. Do you beat yourself? How you beat your wife? You are evil. When you believe in a God and this God, because you killed some Christian and Jews and atheists and Hindus and Buddhas, he will make your penis endless. Well, you are nothing but a penis then, because all your dream is penis. So I have to remove you from the human race to the penis race. And you are complaining. And you call the Christian pigs, and you call them monkeys, and you call them nudges, which means filthy, and no go zoom like Mecca and Medina, and we are kuffar, and we are liars, and they, we are the worst of the creatures, and then a Muhammadan, he complained, look at this, why you are humiliating? So you can humiliate everybody, but no, you can even kill us, take, and take not Christian and Jews as a friends, kill them, whatever you find them. Kill the Christians. Kill those who don't believe in Allah. Kill those who don't believe in Muhammad. Kill those who don't forbid what Allah forbidden. So if we don't forbid pork, you wanna kill us. <laughs> uh, somebody saying, did, did Jesus call, uh, did Jesus insult people by calling them Abduls? Yes, sure. You are the servant of the devil, Abdul. First of all, is, is, is not an insult to you, and you're stupid, because every Muslim supposedly is Abdullah. Should I show you from the Quran? When I debated the Imam of the mosque of, uh, uh, in, in New York, remember the guy, Abdul Wadud? Abdul Wadud? He gave me an example. There's two guys. One, his name is Abdul, and the other one, his name is Abdullah. He chose the names, not me. Do you remember the debate is there? He said, there's two guys, one of his name is Abdul, the other one is Abdullah. This is your sheikh. So why Abdul is an insult for you? You are a slave of Allah. Are you denying it? Secondly, uh, donkeys, will the Quran call us donkeys, you stupid idiot? How come we cannot call you donkey then? So if you are saying calling people donkeys, that's bad. 
Well, let us read the Quran. This is your stupid book calling Christians and Jews donkeys. Obviously, your prophet is very filthy, based on your logic, because he called them donkeys. The likeness of those who they are entrusted with the obligation or the Torah is the like is the same as donkeys who carry a huge burden of books. Do you see it? Do you see why they don't dare to debate me? Because I'm going to block them. You see, when a Muslim he die. Muslim, they put a cork in his anus. Excuse my language. And I challenge any Muslim to say that's true. They push a piece of cotton hard in the anus. Why? Because simply they don't want the dragons to go inside his anus. Well, here I do it without a cork. I use the Quran. So if you are complaining about something not to be said, take it from your book. Then we will not use it. And here we ask ourselves, the Quran saying, that the similarity of those who cannot read the book is donkeys. Well, your prophet cannot read our book. He cannot even read his book. So who is the donkey here? Who is the donkey? This, 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 if we can call it a verse, supposedly the one is talking is Allah. <laughs> yeah, it made me fart. Literally. If this is a word from Allah, well, don't Allah that no, Muhammad, he do not know how to read, how to write, so he carry books. The Jews, they gave him the Torah, he says, okay, he hold it by his hand, and he said, I believe in thee and the, the one who sent thee, but he cannot read thee. How you say, I believe in thee without knowing what is in thee, without reading what is in thee? So who is the donkey? This is why they don't dare to call me and they don't dare to debate me. I will make them hummus in two seconds. I will feed you from your cooking. When you say that the Jews are pigs and monkeys, Allah, oh, why Allah he made the Jews pigs and monkeys? Because brother, they did fishing on Saturday. Like what the heck? They did what? Fishing in Saturday, brother. So this God, <laughs> he make people pigs and monkeys for fishing in Saturday, but he will not make you a pig for raping a child she is six years old. Hmm? Have you ever heard of a God like this? If you do fishing in Saturday, this God, he will make you a pig and a monkey. If you rape, if you kill, if you steal, if you are a child molester like Muhammad, a pedophile, Allah will not make you a monkey. What kind of God this God is? And not only that, the verses speak about what? If we can quote a verse. That Allah, brother, he forbid them from fishing in Saturday or doing any work in Saturday. Okay, brother? Allah, he made the fish come only in Saturday. Like, what the heck? <laughs> So those are people who live in the sea, and now they cannot eat because Allah, he make the fish only come in Saturday. I mean, have you ever heard of a stupid monkey like Muhammad? What kind of wise God, he said to people, don't fish in Saturday, and then he made the fish come only in Saturday. And then when they get hungry, and that's it, they cannot take it no more, they did fish in Saturday. So Allah made them pigs and monkeys, brother. If you don't believe me, we can open the interpretation for you. Did I say interpretation? I mean, you read a Muslim interpretation, you, you feel like you are going in the circus. Everybody is jumping in the rope. And where we are now, we don't know. Who is the elephant? We do not know. Who is the, who is the mule? We do not know. Because all of them do the same in those interpretation. There's no explanation in the interpretation. First of all, who are they, those Jews? who they were living in the sea, and the God, he made them pigs and monkeys. Where do you get this from? Shouldn't you ask for a source for the story? 
You Muhammadan, you have the most weird, stupid religion. If you have an adultery, fornication, the husband, he need to bring four guys and they have to see the penis going in and out, in and out. And we can show you the reference. So for a guy having sex with a vagina, you need four witnesses. For a book of God, you have no witnesses. Four guys have to see the penis going in and out. Not a single guy saw Muhammad talking to Allah or receiving anything from Allah. Alpha word, just get out of here. If a Muslim, a Muslim, he debate a Christian prince, we'll let the Muslims, everybody knows what, if a Muslim debate me, what will happen? Not a single Muslim, he called me and he did not go out without his tail between his legs. Try me. What if, what if, you remind me of Kadaru, what if Vladimir Putin called Christian prince? What if, what about Kadarov? He called me. The coward, the son of Muta, he is trained the president of Ukraine. You trust me, you should ask Putin for refugee. Is that what you, he did to your daddy? This guy who ever sleep with his mom, he called him my dad. Putin, he is the one who destroyed this Chechenia country and he made it, he, he wiped their cities and now they become his puppies. This is the language they understand, sadly. So don't tell me if this guy debate me and that guy debate me just to bring the guy. Can you? Your God Allah don't dare. And by the way, Mr. Alpha, don't forget to bring four witnesses when your wife is cheating on you. And they have to see his penis, the penis of the man going in and out. The guy, this Abdul, he go to the house. He see his wife. <laughs> you remember the story? We gave you the reference. I don't know if the admin have it. He can post it for you. You know, three guys, they saw... <laughs> they saw a man in the top of a woman. And uh, uh, the caliphate, he asked the first one, did you see his penis going in and out? He said, yes. The second one, he said, did you see his penis going on and out? He said, yes. The third one, he said to him, "Did you see what did what did you see?" He said, uh, "I did not see his penis going in and out, but I saw her legs around his head like, like and he was shaking like, like like a donkey." So the caliphate he ordered to beat them up because they did not see all of them the penis going in. Hey, Mister Alpha. And why you call yourself Alpha? You are even that is a story from the Bible. Do listen. Do you live in the neighborhood? Don't give your address because now they knew. And not only that, if if your wife she is a whore and she is sleeping with one thousand men, do you know what Muhammad he said? He said Al Firashul Al Hajar, which means the one who owned the bed, the child belonged to him. Like what the heck? So the neighbors they sleep with your wife. And the children, they are considered your children and they will inherit your money. So now the guy, he effed your wife, excuse me. And now his son will take your money. How fun. <laughs> Read and love. Imagine you, you find out that your wife, she was cheating on you. And those kids are not yours. And now the guy who was, excuse my language, if in your wife, he will inherit you now because all the children you have is his kids. The child belongs to the bed. But the uh, Prophet of Allah, this is not my child, you know, it doesn't matter. You own the bed, don't you? <laughs> don't you own the bed? Uh, yes. So now you paid for the bed. And the neighbor, he took your wife to the bed. He took off her panty, excuse my language. If you don't like to hear it, leave. She made victory sign for him with her legs. And now he is making babies. 
and now the baby of that guy who is if in your wife is going to inherit you look how nice you are you bought the bed for them you paid the dowry of your wife the neighbor he if her she make a baby the baby is his he inherit your money after you die the baby will take the bed to his father including the women <laughs> and all your money in the saving account <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. I'm truly, truly convinced that Muhammad is a genius. Actually, he's a genie. And yes, this is where the word genius is coming from. Genius. Muhammad is so good in everything. If your wife. This is a civil law in the state of Washington. I don't know about that, but if they have it, this is a, that's mean they are stupid. <laughs> because you should inherit your father, you know, you don't inherit somebody else, unless they can consider it as an adoption. However, my friend, listen, in, 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 in the West, in the West, they have the civil law, right? Uh, the son is still inherit the mother anyway, right? But here, this is not about just inheritance. The child will carry your name, you like it or not. When Muhammad, he says, the boy to the owner of the bed, he is saying that his name is your name. His last name is your last name. Inheritance is his your inheritance. So, and this is, this is very painful, especially if you, you know, and it's it's dangerous too, because this is what will happen now. If the man, his wife, she step with somebody, and now she have a daughter from that somebody. According to Islam, this is not his daughter. She is not from his blood, so he can have sex with her. And actually, in Islam, as an example, chapter 25, verse number 52, even if you have a daughter, she is from fornication, you can have sex with her. And we showed you the reference many times. Holy uh, Tony Holy mentioned the last honor killing in Kurdish lady. Now, this is really the problem now, the honor killing, all the diseases we have, and this is the problem now. A lady, she lived in a country, she knew their mentality, they knew how savage they are. Well, she should not do. I'm not saying they are right, but you must be stupid out of your mind to do something will cause your death. And you know, is going to cause your death. At least she did something. People, they die for no reason in the Middle East. A woman, she is accused that she insulted Muhammad. They kill her. A guy, he made a post in Facebook. They throw him from the top, the, fir the fourth floor. Uh, do we have any shake here? Any shake with beer, etc.? Your son will be a came up with state. Your son will be came up with state. Twenty three percent of Muslim in America they are going to leave Islam. And look, guys, they have the numbers. Twenty three percent. I mean, how those people they got those numbers from? I mean, do you see how the Muslim, they have details which we don't, nobody have the details. They are connected to NASA, you know, because Allah from the sky, he sent them the numbers, 23%. Okay, how you know they are 23%? Hmm, Abdul? I heard that they are 23% and a half. The Muslims, they are the best to give us numbers. 
how many Muslims there are there is in the world? Two, two weeks ago, it was 1.6. Two weeks after, 1.8. Next next month, they are 2 billion. Okay, is the Shia Muslims? Oh no, they aren't Muslims. Okay, so now let us delete, you know, 600 Muslim, million Muslims. <laughs> Is the Druze Muslim? No. Is the Ahmadiyya Muslim? No. Is the Sufi Muslim? No. Is uh, is the Salafi? Is the Wahhabi Muslim? No. So who is the Muslim? I mean, do you see the stupidity of this religion? They think by mentioning numbers, like they can intimidate you and make you believe this is a good religion. But the second you start asking them who is the Muslim, you will find that nobody is a Muslim. Even their stupid prophet, he says that the most divided religion is Islam. Not the Christians, not the Jews. Who is the Muslim? 1.6 billion. Is the Shia Muslims? No. Okay. So now we delete Iraq, we delete Iran, we delete blah, 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 blah. We delete Azerbaijan. We delete, we delete, we delete, we delete. Okay, now, so those, okay, now we have, we left with what? 800 million. Okay, let us continue now. Is the Ahmadiyya Muslim? No. Is the Sufi Muslim like Erdogan and Turkey? No. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. So, I invite you all <clears throat> to challenge Muslim to come and debate me. Shakes, shakes, we need shakes, you know, we need shakes. So everybody see that those who claim to be shake, they are shaky. They are not really what they claim to be. All those who have like YouTube, like Yasser Qadi, Yasser Qadi is a shake. He called himself a shake. But the second you start asking him a question, the shake, he make poo poo. You see, in Islam, everybody, everybody passed the exam. As long as you don't take it. <laughs> um, you know, in Saudi Arabia, they, you should see the history exam, exam. In the school, the first thing, when you enter the school, they will, they will have the name of the founder of the kingdom, which is not a kingdom, really. It's a farm. Uh, the name of the first one who established the kingdom. They repeat that every day in the news, everybody in TV, every, in every book. And then the most important question, which will have like 40, uh, 40 uh, from your grade, what is, the found, what is the name of the founder of the kingdom of Saudi Arabia? Uh, you answer that one, okay, you'll get 40 grade. Now, we will give you another question. What is the name of the king today? You answer that, you get 20 uh, great. <laughs> I remember once they have a program in Ramadan. If you answer the question, you win a, a, a one ounce of gold. So there's two teams. It's a TV entertainment program. The first team they ask him, they ask them, there's an insect mentioned in the Quran and make honey. What is the name of the insect? The team start negotiating. Time is up. The second team start negotiating too. Time is up. Now the answer will go to the street. So they have a guy in the street, he asks questions. So he go in the street and he asks, okay, there's an insect mentioned in the Quran and make honey. What is the insect? <laughs> um, Michael, I think you have a problem, my friend. Are you mentally ill? Anyone will come here to troll, I will block you. If you are trying to do trolling here, I have no place for you. You are blocked. So either you speak as a man, as an adult, or we will send you free shipping and hand it into Allah. Don't try to troll with me. It doesn't work. I'm not Allah. And I can show you an example of a trolling. If you want, you can join Islam and you can troll everybody. As an example, 
if we go now in the Quran and we ask the sheikhs to explain something for us, anything, you know, you will see that the most popular statement Muslims, they say that Allah knows best. And you can troll. You can make all the poopoo you want. And then you cover your ass by making disclaimer and Allah knows best. <laughs> Allah knows best. You will see a Muslim who claimed to be a sheikh make an article full of poopoo. And now to cover himself from being humiliated or opposed or exposed, what he say? And brother and sisters, Allah Alam, Allah knows best. <laughs> what do you mean Allah knows best? Yes, Allah knows best. What the heck? So what is what is the meaning of this? Okay, I want to explain to you uh, the meaning, okay? Uh, now, let me show you uh, the meaning of uh, the, you know, that thing. Okay, okay. So can you explain to me chapter... Uh, Qaf, it says Qa, Qa, what Qa mean? Qa is a letter. Verse number one, what is that? In chapter 50. From the narration of the authority of Ibn Abbas, he said, the interpretation of Allah saying Qaf, Qaf, he says, it's an azure mountain overlooking the world, and the color of the sky takes from it. <laughs> and Allah swore by it. <laughs> and now we get the explanation, brother. Abdul, hold on. First of all, why you stupid dummy God swearing by this calf mountain, which is overlooking the world, and the sky is taking its color from it? Anybody can tell us why? There's a God. He swear by a mountain, and this mountain is a blue. You know the song? Now I know where the song is coming from. Oh, mommy. Oh, mommy, mommy, blue, oh, mountain blue, oh, mommy, oh, mommy, mommy, blue. This is a blue mountain. That's why we cannot see it. Makes sense. It's overlooking the world. When we look, it looks like a sky, but it's a mountain. Idiots. Allah knows best. And then, <laughs> they keep saying to us, the glorious noble Quran. <laughs> the book, half of it is about Ifin and the glorious Quran. I mean, do you see how glorious it is? The glory is dripping, my friend. When you ask those Muhammadan anything about the religion, if, if you ask them who is Allah, they don't know. They will say to you, he's a creator. My friend, this is not the question. I'm not asking what he do. Who is Allah? He is the creator, I just told you. But Allah, he says in the Quran, he is the best of the creators. So which one of them? Oh, uh, Allah, you know, he said he is the best, the creator. Okay, don't you create a bicycle? Abdul. The one who made a bicycle, he is a creator now. Isn't it the Quran says that the one who can create a fly, he is a creator? Create a fly, not a bicycle. Fly, fly. Is that your Quran? So the Muhammadan, they try to duct tape their city stupid prophet. This guy, he is like a basket full of holes, and you are trying to hold water inside it. And the poor Abdul, the poor Abdul, they try to fix the basket, so they keep putting duct tape, duct tape, duct tape, to the point you cannot even use the basket. The whole basket is a duct tape. Please help Indonesian to get out from this cult. My friend, don't you see? I'm doing everything I can. I give my books in Indonesian language, Malaysian language, uh, Albanian, Croatian, uh, Chinese, Russian. Hey, by the way, do me a favor. Those, if you don't have my link for my Russian book, if any of you actually can do some adjustment, if you can, uh, I, I don't know if any of you can help. Uh, 
if you can make like a, a Photoshop of my book image and put in picture, put it there. And and uh, the picture of Qadarov, you know Qadarov? And uh, like, I wanna give this book as a gift to Putin and his puppy Qadarov. And then we go, we post the link everywhere of the book, which means we will embed the picture as a cover for my book in the PDF file. So whoever download it, he will get it. And then post it everywhere. Let the Abdul see it. Uh, by the way, I, I have news for you. I decided from now on to speak to you in different language, as long as we are talking about languages. Now, many of you might get upset because you don't understand. But my friend, this is not my fault. This is not my fault, sorry. It's not my fault that you are not educated, smart Arab like me. It's not my fault that I am an Arab and you are not. As you know, we are the best of mankind, as Prophet Muhammad said. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Just get it, don't take it seriously. So from now on, I'm going to speak to you in the language of the bell. All right. Now, who don't understand, I don't care. I am going to follow the steps of Allah. Allah, he spoke to Muhammad in the language of the bell. He gave him Quran as a sound of a bell. And then this, those Christians, those Christians, Kuffar, they stole the bell of Allah and they started singing jungle bells, jungle bells. May Allah curse them. Allah is the only God who delivered his wisdom, wisdom, in the language of the bell. See? It's different. Now, the prophet is the only one who can take the sound of the bell and make it Arabic bell. I will shave my 28 meter beard if a Muslim can explain to me how in the hell Muhammad, he received the Quran in the sound of a bell and become Arabic. I wanna know. Don't you want to know? I find it amazing that the only one, the first one who used such a language, it was Allah. Unbelievable. Allah, he sent Morse code, Muhammad, he made Quran. Allah, he sent the bell sound. I mean, any Muslim can explain to us how the, and why it was severe on him. What happened? That, that's very noisy, huh? Must be very noisy bell. Not like the bell I have, I played for you. Must be very, very noisy bell. And what make it more funny, Muhammad, he said that, he said that the bell is the instrument of shaitan. So Muhammad was receiving Quran from who? From the instrument of shaitan or from Allah? Who is playing this instrument? Read. Oh, I forgot you, Muhammad, and do not know how to read. Right, yeah. Hmm. Like your prophet. The prophet BBUH, this is like a kind of a chemical, you know, like acid with the high you know, uh, superstition, like P, P, B, U, H, you know, like U, H, like, like, what the heck, you know, you, you know, the, you know, the thing, George Biden can explain it to you. The bell is the, uh, is one of the musical instrument of Satan. 
And here we learn from this that Shaitan, he have other musical instrument, but this is one of them. And then the same idiot, he say that he received Quran in a sound of a bell. Who is the donkey here? You just said that the bell is the sound instrument of Satan. And then you say to us, you receive Quran in the sound of a bell? Jungle bell, jungle bell, jungle, oh Louise. Muhammad is speaking, making poo poo all over the way. Who can stop his poop? Who can collect his poop? He will be lucky, dude. And he will go to hell, hey? <laughs> what the heck? That's so good. Anyway, I'm not going to keep you long here. Usually when Christian Prince, he said, I'm not going to keep you long here. That's an average of six hours, you know, like, <laughs> like, hey guys, I'm, not, I'm going to make a short video, okay? Today, our video is very short. And then one hour go, two hour goes, three hour goes, five hour goes, and, and, and people go to sleep and they come back, and Christian Prince still ringing the bell and receiving phone, phone call from Zach and tell them, tell them, Christian Prince, first of all, I told you 1,000 times don't call me. Second night, I was saying I'm going to leave. Why you call me now? First of all, you are going to leave because you are afraid of me. What do you mean I'm afraid of you, you idiot? Okay, I'm not leaving. Christian Prince, you said you are leaving, and now you are saying you are not leaving, and that proved to me that you are a liar. Like, what the heck? What, what do you mean? Did you say a second ago that you are going to leave me? Yeah. And now you are here at leaving. Yeah. So you are lying. You are lying. I got busted. You are not handed. Hey, Zach and Nike, I'm saying I'm leaving now because you just called me. And it's not nice to leave. And when you are challenging me to debate, are you going to call me? To, didn't you to call me to debate me? Christian Prince. First of all, I don't debate ignorant. Uh -huh. Okay. Can you explain to me how the, your prophet received the sound of the bell? It's very simple. The prophet, he haven't spent it eating. And he can hear things. Nobody can hear it. Mm -hmm. Okay, but this is not the question. The question is, he received the Quran in the sound of the bell. How the sound of the bell became, become, become Arabic? Quran. Very simple. First of all, when he created the Prophet Muhammad, he installed inside him a translator. Really? Exactly. So the Prophet received the sound of the bell from his ear, and then it go to the brain. And then the brain, and then you know I'm the doctor. Go from the brain, go to his mouth, and then he speak in Arabic. That's deep. Exactly. He have a very deep tongue, brother. Uh, Zakir, where do you get those answers from? First of all, I cannot tell you where I get my answer from because Allah knows best. Secondly, you said you are leaving and you are a liar. You did not leave. Uh, okay, I'm leaving. See, I told you, Muslim, if I call him, he will hang up on me and he's a coward and he's running away. Okay, I'm not leaving. I told you, he will say he's leaving, and he is not leaving, he's liar, he's liar, I get you busted. This is the troll, the Muhammadan, they troll you. They try to mock you. Here you have no place, I will make you shish kebab. Oh, don't talk about shish kebab. Zakir, do you remember the hadith where your God, Allah, he heard the invoke of Prophet Muhammad, and then he sent him a dish of kebab, and he ate it, he got the power of 40 men? Christian Prince. Allah, he can do miracle. Okay, so the prophet, his penis, his willy is not functioning. Even if he played the anthem for him, it doesn't stand up. And now he invoke Allah. And now Allah want to fix it. But isn't it Allah in the Quran says, if he want to make something happen, he say B is going to be. So how come he did not say to his penis B and he was fixed? Prince and Prince. First of all, Allah will never use the word B with penis. Uh, why? Because it's a very sensitive area. If Allah said be to the penis of the Prophet, it might fall apart. So Allah he decided to use medicine. It's easier and more guaranteed. Uh, the peanut of the Prophet needs shish kebab from the kitchen of Allah, and this is how they fix it. Hey, Zakir Naik, how about your penis? Prince and Prince, so respect. Uh, 
So if respect is not talking about penis, so why are your prophet talking about his penis? First of all, my prophet, he think about his peanut because his peanut is very profitary. What, what? Profitary. Profitary? What is that? According to Allah, prophet, they have a special kind of peanut. And this is why prophet of Allah, he has power of 40 men. Hey, hey, Zakir, I have a question about this one. How Muhammad, he measure his penis power by 40 men? Like, did he bring to his bedroom 40 men and they were like, let us see who can do better? Breath and breath, same on you. You are making your conversation as if you are talking about porn. And it's a train for you. The Prophet, when Allah he made his penis have the power of 40, he told him, now you have a penis of 40 power. Hey, hold on. He told him that, where? Zakir, you said, you just said he told him, where? Zakir, Zuzu, did you hang up? Zuzu hang up. The power of 40 men. This is remind me of Ali Baba and the 40 men. Did Muhammad took, he was inspired by Ali Baba? Hmm? Muslims? I mean, why 40? Why not 39? Just like, help me, help me. Why the Prophet, he got the power of 40 men? Any Muhammadan? And by the way, why he's weak? 40 men? Like, what the heck? I'm so disappointed. I'm not going to follow him no more. I will never follow a prophet. His penis is, is good only for 40. Like, what the heck? I'm going to follow Mr. Rabbit. He is better a prophet. He never stopped. And then we find that the prophet, he cannot even have sex. And the prophet, he imagined himself having sex. So all this drama was for nothing. The prophet, he, he, was, he was, look at the victim, Muhammad. His penis is a victim now. Look, somebody, he bewitched your penis. You know? Like, you know, he, they did voodoo. So I'm assuming they make a shape of a penis and they start putting needle in it. <laughs> and Muhammad like, I, oh, it hurt. You know, Aisha said, hold on, I did not touch it yet. What happened? I don't know, it's not working. You know, like, what the heck? So the power of 40 men and the guy, even his sex was imaginary. Anyway, I'm really convinced that the prophet is a prophet. Now you will see somebody is a Christian sending me email, say, listen, friends, why you use the word potato? I mean, look what we are talking about, penises, vagina, anus, poo, poo sex with the children, and the one hurt your feeling is potato? Are you sure? I mean, do you see how sensitive those Christians are? Please, CP, don't use the word potato. It's not nice, brother. Oh, okay. I'm not. I'm going to stop using the word potato. Can I use watermelon? Oh no, please. There's a fatwa about having sex with water. Have you ever heard of religion teaching the followers to have sex with watermelon? We can't eat anything no more. Sex with watermelon? And by the way, this is a short video. I said I'm leaving. <laughs> Sex with watermelon. Nikah. Nikah with watermelon. Mm. 
and the sheikh he described for you how to make a hole in it. <laughs> And the Shia, they make fun of the Muslim Sunni, and they ask them, do we need witnesses? <laughs> oh boy. <clears throat> there is a Muslim website, it's called Shia Pen. Shia pen. And there they have many translations. You can search for the title. Chapter 8, Example of Sunni Morality. And there you will see all the madness. You know, I mean, some of it, for sure, not all of it. Some. But don't go there if you are a person who the word potato offend you. Because there you will see Crazy stuff. Third example of Sunni morality. Sunni is an Islam, the biggest Islamic uh, school of uh, as a sect. You know, the, the Sunni are four sect, and then from the four sect, there is many sect, and each one of them accuse the other one not to be Muslim. So, if a man make a hole in a watermelon or a piece of dough or a leather skin or a statues and has statues, don't take a Muslim to the museum. <laughs> <laughs> with what like what what exactly make a hole with what and you are telling me that Islam is not from God what's wrong with you Muhammad he beat the Buddhas he beat the atheists he, be, he beat the hippies he didn't beat everybody Six with watermelon. And I cannot go and buy watermelon no more because people, they will think like, what the heck, why he's buying it now, huh? Ah, I saw Christian Prince buying watermelon. Okay, take a picture of him taking a watermelon home and he is single and he live alone. And then you go to the bedroom, you don't find you don't find the watermelon in the fridge. The watermelon in the bed. Watermelon. Sex with watermelon. And then the Shia they start asking the Sunni. Okay, well, hold on. Uh, <laughs> The ruling, this ruling of the safe sect, which means the Muslim Sunni, contracting temporarily marriage muta with the women, with, uh, with the women is haram, but contracting a temporary marriage with watermelon is halal. <laughs> In his uh, defense, perhaps Ibn al Qayyim, this is the one of the biggest scholars supporting Islam. Uh, only meant it, it's allowed to marry a watermelon in the intent of divorcing it. <laughs> for doing muta with the watermelon would it clearly be an act of fornication <laughs> and then here suppose this is a shia guy continue saying muta is on other hand is an open license for sexual pleasure with as many as women as one can financially afford in other way as many as watermelon officially can find can afford uh, the women who engage in muta are hired thus it can be performed with with all women uh, respective uh, uh, of their age character and conduct or religion so he's asking is that the same for the watermelon should we marry only muslim watermelon what about her age <laughs> is it okay to have a watermelon she is under the age <laughs> Exactly. This is called halal fun, my friend. So uh, let us finish it with, with this. Let me post the link for you. So in case you want to read and educate yourself and have some reference, in case somebody argue with you one day, you know, this is all the references there, by the way. This is a translated by Muslim. This is a Muslim website. Just take a note. This is not a Christian website. This is a Shia. 
Uh, so you can save it in your reference if you care. And I think we have enough for today. So I want to say to those Christians, I did not make this video to make fun of you, but please, our topic is ugly and dirty. Don't complain about potato and tomato and SHIT. This is a very shitty topic. So if you are not willing to listen to something shitty, don't listen to anything about Islam. It's a comedy, it's a stupid, it's disgusting. Which one of them? They come together. I cannot make it funny, for it is funny. I cannot make it clean, for it is filthy. I cannot change my topic to make it holy, because I'm speaking about the devil and his teaching. So if you are a person who got offended by the way I talk, don't come here. This is how we do it. This is how we do it. Thank you. God bless you and see you soon again. Christ is Lord and Islam is a scam and Islam without lies dies. I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. The Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brothers asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes in it. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. 